him in darkness for the remainder of his sins, for the remainder of his life, whichever comes first. This film, out of all of them, brings so much up in me. It is absolutely brutal. Forget Brad. Today, guys, I'm telling you, I've been waiting for this one. It's the most impactful film that I know. Today, I'm reacting to Papillon. Papillon, right? Blamed you for murder. And this is the thing you've got to understand, you know, he's had all that success, all the high life, everything that he had out there, Charlie Adam in this. But now, of course, he's, you know, the stark reality of what's happened to him has come to an end. He's nicked. Now he's in one of the most brutal penal systems at that time in the world. But he's still got the spirit in him, right? He's still got the fight in him. And, of course, one of the things that they do in here is to knock that out you, is to, is to contain you and really break you. You know, and it reminds me of my journey when I was back in them dark days. I never thought I was going to get out of there. This is the ultimate story of adversity and overcoming yourself and everything else to survive. You know, and I have to be honest, right? You know, I see them break a lot more harder, stronger people than me every day of the week. But there was something in me, just that little bit in me that, that, that was left after it all that would not give up, that would survive regardless and keep my self-respect. He must be feeling this now, but he's just at the start of this sentence. Papillon, written in 1969, the novel by Henry Carrier, based on true events, of course. Straight away in 1973, it was optioned to be the first film starring then big names, Steve McQueen, Dustin Hoffman. Massively successful film. This, of course, is the 2017 uh, remake with uh, the massively successful actor now, very talented, I think, Charlie Unham and Rami Malek. When you first go into prison, you have to think you've got all of this stuff, you've got all your memories with you. Now you're really, you know, you're in a different universe, you're in a different world. You have to adapt to that, right? You know, and you see amazing things like this guy here, right? You know, he's just killed him right there, you know, just like that. Life is cheap in there. I see a couple of, a couple of people get, get, get murdered in prison, unfortunately. This happens. Sometimes you go to a prison, you'd be strong. You'd have, you know, you'd have some of your mob, some of your strong friends. Other times you'd go to another prison, there wouldn't really be any of your friends there, but you'd have a lot of enemies there and you'd still have to front them. Smells like freedom. Well, you've heard of someone escaping the prison? It's well scripted as well with uh, Rami, Rami Malek here and, and Charlie Unham because, you know, you've got that dynamic. They're both very different characters, but by necessity and just by that survival and how useful they are to each other, they have that common bond, which, you know, you're really getting there. That's akin to being soldiers in the trenches, in a war. It really is survival of the fittest and do or die. There's always one or two of these guys in the prison population. They're a bit unhinged. They're bullies. They kind of look for their targets, but very dangerous all the same, right? They usually go for the easy targets, you know, the easy way out, but very, very lethal, very dangerous all the same. And they always go a bad way. You know, they always go a bad way in my, in my, uh, in my experience, what I've seen. And uh, just like it goes very bad for this guy here, because what you put out, ultimately, especially in these places, you will invite it back to you. It's very authentic in the way that Charlie Unham is, it's all about survival. But in this way, 
you know, of course, he's a tough guy, you know, you know, he come from the street, he has a lot of self-respect. So for him is to stand forward and defend himself. The best form of defense is attack. But here what he's doing is he's taking his power as well within the group, which um, is a double-edged sword. In them days, of course, it was brutal. I remember being in Wakefield when I was up there in the cages. You know, they put the worst of the worst up there. Charlie Bronson was there when I was there. Of course, I got well back with Charlie. There was a lot of other big names there. Reg Wilson was there. I was in the cage up the stairs. When they took me down to the bottom, some of the cells had put me in there. I was fighting with them. I had a lot of trouble with them guards in there that time. You'd see hooks in the floor, into the concrete floor, where they used to, you know, where they used to put people in uh, body bags, straight jackets, you know, and hook them to the floor. And Rami Malik in this, it, you know, it's well scripted again because he's, he's a vulnerable one, right, you know? Charlie on him. Papillon is really looking after him here. But in this way, you see how the violence has just followed them, as it can do in these places. And this was the start of his, his elevation and notoriety within the prison system, which I also had and had to contend with. And of course, which is another story up and drive within this film. It's no rehabilitation. We know that's useless. So we do our best to break you. This to me with, you know, the governor after the guard was nearly killed is it's the most impactive scene of the whole lot. It really gets me here as well because <clears throat> this goes right to the heart of what certainly my experience was. Being in a place like this where every time the door opens there's violence and you don't know if you're ever going to get out of there. You lose everything. They're spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally bankrupt. You feel like I used to walk them corridors and them places and be down them blocks of solitary and feel like every bit of emotion was sucked out of me. Like I was the living dead. I was a non-person. Strange things happen there. Especially to those who cling to hope. Strange things happen to people there. And that is my experience, guys. You know, I'd done about four years in, in solitary, 23 hours a day, bang up. In them days, it was called continuous assessment. You'd go from block to block to block. You know, I would sit there, I would think of how oh, I was never going to let these people, you know, beat me, how I would escape. Steve, did you ever think about escaping prison? <laughs> did I think about escaping? Every minute of the day, I was doing things prepared to do things that people wouldn't even do who was crazy, ready to escape. I kid you not, constantly. One of the things that kept me going. Do you think a person knows when he's going mad? And I love this as well. I mean, he's a real fucker, this governor. Do you know what I mean? You know, and they make it personal. Don't you worry about that. Sometimes it's kind of my door. You would see a head that'd be behind a, a sea of six of them, right? You know, it'd be like that. But, you know, he really fought them in this pampelon. You know, I did on my sentence. I wouldn't advise that to other people. But for me, it was my way of escaping. I held on to that anger. So I understand it. That's why this film is so impactive for me. And just to try and unravel and reveal some of the layers about just what is really actually going on here in this masterful film, Papillon. As well, this guy goes in that cell, you don't even get the air exercise, that's it, you don't come out at all. Brutal. I wanted to come sooner, but I was afraid you wouldn't want to. He plays such a good part, uh, Rami Malek, in this. He's, he, he, he's such a fine actor, and uh, the way they play both of them off here to keep this narrative moving, it, it really helps to reveal the layers. They bounce, bounce off each other masterfully. When the film starts, we'll go through the warden's building. I'll have a key.
even after it all, the thing that keeps them buoyant, the thing that gives them that spirit, even keeps them going through the worst of times, is that they think escape is close. It's just around the corner. They think they can do it. They hang on to that. Well, we cannot live. Take it. It's dead weight. Of course, they've escaped there now, and then you can see, you know, people turn, right? By circumstances, it makes them turn. So now they're out in the sea, and now this guy, he's, he's losing the plot because he's up against it. And this is what I'm talking about. You see the best of people in the real hard times. Of course, he's not, he's not violent, he's not physical at all, but he wants to liven up here. Look, he, should, you know, he needs to do something, right? Rami Malik in this, in this scene here, you know, he, he comes in, he hasn't been exposed to crime, he hasn't been exposed to this kind of violence, these kind of people even. So, you know, it's a real baptism of fire for him. And, you know, even though he's trying to survive and navigate, he's played such a masterful part. Now you see when he finds it within himself, there's that murder, that rage, that blood, and of course, it all comes out. And I've seen this happen. I've seen it change people in there time and time again. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed uh, my uh, reaction to Papillon. Of course, Charlie Unham was also in uh, Gentleman, The Gentleman, which is at 900K views now in the first month on the channel. Thank you everyone for subscribing and really loving the content. Really look after yourself, guys. We've got so much stuff coming up. You know, like stuff on the resilience code, you know, in my own brand, really empowering males, unlocking their greatness towards their success. You can see more about that at stephengillen.com. Details again below. And look, big love to you guys out there. Big blessings. Take care of yourself. Until next time, and be lucky.